with this time around is the money market and loanable funds, which are two graphs that you're very likely to have to do, not only separately, but possibly together in a free response question. So not only do you want to understand what happens with the money market, all the things that the Fed can do, different ways that the curves can shift, but you also need to understand what the relationship is between those changes and what happens in the loanable funds market. So let's take the money market separately and then we'll put them together. Loanable funds is one of the easiest graphs you're going to have, but if you can't do them in combination, you're going to get stuck. So for the money market, the first thing that you want to keep in mind is that the government agency responsible for controlling the money supply is the Fed. some very specific tools that the Fed has in order to control the money supply. Now the only one that you hear about in the news is interest rates, but that doesn't mean what you might think it means if all you do is watch the news. So starting with the one most commonly used, and these would go in the category of tools for controlling the money supply. Number one, open market operations. This is the one that the Fed is going to engage in pretty much all the time. What that means is that they are either buying or selling U.S. government bonds to try to put upward or downward pressure on the money supply. So there's two different things that can happen here. If they sell bonds, then what happens is that the money that you give to the Fed stays in the Fed. They take the money, you buy the government bonds. That pulls money off the market. Selling bonds reduces the money supply, which sounds backwards. We think sell means more. No. Here you have to think about the direction the money is going. They sell bonds, the money goes to the Fed. On the other hand, if they buy bonds, the money goes to the public. They buy bonds, you get more money. That increases the money supply. And if you want a trick for this, which I think is beautiful, this is from the book Five Steps to a Five by Eric Dodge. You don't have to get it. His trick is buy bonds equals big bucks. It's good stuff. Because if the Fed is buying bonds, money supply, goes up. Okay, sell bonds, it's down, money supply goes up if they're buying. Down, up. So open market operations is one really that they're talking about. When they say that the Fed lowered interest rates, which has happened several times in the past year, they're not actually lowering interest rates. What they're doing is engaging in open, in open market operations to put downward pressure on interest rates. So that's the one that they're going to do most commonly. Another option they have is to lower what's called the discount rate. The discount rate is the rate at which banks can borrow money from the Fed for short-term, maybe overnight loans to meet their liquidity needs. Now, one reason lowering the discount rate does not really have that much of an impact on the money supply is that just because the Fed lowers rates doesn't mean that banks are going to borrow money. They can't make the banks borrow the money. They can't make the banks make that money available to their customers. So lowering the discount rate is not the most effective way to do that, and it's not going to have as big an impact on public confidence as if they do this. Another thing the Fed can do for number three is to lower the reserve requirement. The 
term requirement is the percentage of deposits that banks in the United States are required to hold, either as vault cash or money on deposit with the Fed. The number that you see most commonly in problems dealing with this is 20% or 0.2. That's, that's the one that you see most often. Now, again, the most common one is number one, open market operations. And I'll do this one more time out here. If they sell bonds, money supply goes down. If they buy, money supply goes up. With the discount rate, if they lower it, money supply goes up. If they raise it, money supply goes down. With the reserve requirement, if they raise the reserve requirement, let's see, money supply goes down. Hang on a second. That's not what I want to do. If they lower it, money supply goes up, meaning that banks have more available as excess reserves. And if they raise the reserve requirement, then money supply goes down. Now what happens with number three is that when they change the reserve requirement, all that does is change the category of reserves the bank has. It doesn't mean that they have fewer total reserves. It means that some of the reserves, for example, if they lower the reserve requirement, some of the reserves that they had as required become excess. If they are now excess reserves, that's money they can loan to you, the customer. So those are the things that you tend to hear about. The one that is most common, when on the news they say the Fed lowered interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point, which was virtually unheard of almost in my lifetime, or the Fed lowers interest rates by a quarter of a percent, which is what they did most recently, what they're actually doing is not changing any of these things. What they're doing is engaging in open market operations, number one, to put downward pressure on the federal funds rate, which is not actually controlled by the Fed. And you may see a question dealing with some of the different categories of interest rates, so I want to make sure you remember what the federal funds rate is. Remember, the discount rate is the rate at which banks borrow money from the Fed. The federal funds rate is the rate at which banks borrow money from each other. Now, the Fed does not set the federal funds rate. It's kind of dumb that it's called federal funds rate because it's nothing to do really with the Fed. But as they engage in buying and selling bonds to put pressure on the amount of money that's in circulation, they can push the rate up and down. If they engage in buying bonds, increasing the money supply, then we'll see on the money market graph what happens to the money supply. It's very easy to see. I'll give you some scenarios and show you how to represent them graphically. 